Welcome everybody. Uh, Sunny, welcome from Berlin today. Um, thank you very much for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Magdalena and today, together with my colleague Nikolai, we will be the host of today's webinar and meeting. Um, we are both working as a project manager for SIBB Association. Let me shortly introduce you as our association is uh, Association of IT Companies from Berlin Brandenburg. And we are supporting and promoting digitalization in our region. But very important aspect of our uh, association is international collaboration. And we have very long lasting relation, business relation, collaboration with uh, Polish partners. Uh, and today webinar is also part of a Deep Tech Hub Poland project, uh, where we try to bring together IT ecosystem from both countries. We are very happy to see that the participants are quite uh, we had a big number of, of registration for today's webinar from both countries and really hope it will be very interesting um, discussion and collaboration. Uh, but as I mentioned, um, this webinar, it's also in collaboration, it's also part of our youngest forum. We have 13 thematic forums, which is a sharing economy and subscription um, uh, forum. And Nikolai, as um, facilitator of this of this uh, forum, will give us a short introduction and give us a background about the numbers and actual state about the uh, uh, shared mobility in both mm -hmm. countries. Nikolai. Yep. Okay, I have been myself, so I hope everyone could uh, see me now a little bit bigger. And. Yeah, as Magdalena said, my name is Nikolai Tretikov. I work together with Magdalena on international activities of digital business station Berlin Brandenburg. And right now I will give a short presentation on, on the forum. So let me uh, share my, my screen. Should be this one. Um, yes, we see it. Well. Just, yeah, uh, just let me make it full screen. Oh, okay, now I think, okay, it works, right? Yeah. Uh, so guys, I will not make much of your time. I'm here today to tell you what's the current state of shared mobility in Europe, why to use shared mobility, and what are the trends in shared mobility. But before that, let me advertise our forum a little bit. So as Magdalena already told us, that's the youngest forum of SABB. We had two events by now. The first one was on discussing synergies and finding opportunities between different means of shared economy, like combining micromobility, both charting and flights all together. This was quite an interesting panel. And the second event we had in October, uh, where we tackled the topic of subscription economy for the first time with representatives from different verticals of IT. So both events are available on YouTube. I invite you to watch them. And if you're interested in future partnership with our forum, please let me know. So uh, to start with, I decided to select uh, this quote from Shared Mobility Index report uh, that says that Shared Mobility got its mojo, mojo back. As you can see on this graphic, um, that represents all uh, European cities and the means of shared mobility in the cities, there was a sort of a drop in January 2021, but after that, um, the evolution continued. And uh, by now, uh, by, I mean, that's the latest data I could find uh, by September 2021, uh, it's definitely on the rise. Uh, surprisingly is that uh, both two German cities with Berlin on top that I'm totally proud of, um, the biggest number of sh means of shared mobility increased. And uh, as you could see from this uh, graphic, um, mostly the number of different uh, e-bikes and e-scooters um, are on the rise with slight, slight increase uh, for the cars. So that's quite positive news. And it means that uh, this industry will continue to grow. Maybe one more uh, graph to uh, detailize the previous topic. Um, as you could see, as of September 2021, Berlin altogether had more than 50, around uh, 30, uh, 40, 48,000 of shared vehicles, or around 150 shared vehicles per 10,000 inhabitants. I would say it's quite impressive, especially if you compare with other European cities. And we are 
they will definitely continue with this uh, pace. So as you see, there are a lot of shared mobility means and people select them for some reason, right? They, for some reason, refuse to use their uh, own private cars and decide for shared mobility. Um, there was a, a research by McKinsey and I would like to illustrate one diagram for that research. So up to, I think they asked around 900 people and as for the primary reason for ride sharing, uh, the people, um, the respondents, they have selected the convenience, uh, meaning that um, especially for um, calling taxi with uh, smartphones or um, doing everything on the fly, <laughs> it was for them super convenient. The second reason was that it's actually cheaper uh, than using private car, especially on long-term basis. Basis. As for the third reason, um, mostly people use it use shared mobility for their uh, business activities because they could easily get it reimbursed. Uh, since a lot of apps they also allow you to download electronic receipts. Um, some people used, for example, car sharing uh, or different ride sharing activities because they don't drive or don't like driving. And definitely when you do everything via the phone, you don't have to carry around cash. That's also a benefit. Um, uh, but that was a global uh, survey. And if you refer to Germany, um, uh, in comparison to the global perspective, we could see some changes, especially when it comes to uh, availability and reliability. Uh, meaning that uh, for Germany, it's very important that uh, ride-sharing opportunities, they are available right now, right here. As you see, in comparison to the global perspective, in Germany, um, there is a little bit less influence of safety, but I would say it's still quite important. Um, and again, the competitive price of using ride-sharing. So that's kind of an advice for all uh, Polish companies coming to Germany. Please think of these features in your application, applications because it's quite important for uh, German consumers. And last, not least, um, I have looked through different trends that exist in shared mobility at the moment. Actually, if you would Google that, you will find out that everything is overwhelmed by some trends uh, written by one private company. That's why I decided not to use that, but make some sort of a mix of different sources for now. So most important uh, at this and most uh, known at this point is um, providing safety for all road users, like the introduction of geofencing, uh, no-go areas. That's also maybe important for micromobility. Uh, then there are use cases also in Germany about introducing neighborhood mobility hubs when uh, all the ride sharing activities they try to promote local communities and make it more inclusive for local communities so that's quite important for shared mobility today uh, the third uh, trend is about cargo biking and you making uh, use of different utility vehicles also corporate vehicles so um, we also tackle this topic today uh, for shared mobility is definitely not about just cars <laughs> right now the fourth strand is actually introducing interacts with the other part of our forum it's about car subscription uh, so right now um, companies like you know, BMW or Volkswagen they think of different subscription models for their cars and the fifth one is uh, connected to data and security and potential opportunities when um, all this data generated by connected cars and transport could be utilized by i don't know behavior behavior traits of consumers and future advertising so that's actually what i, I wanted to tell about uh, shared mobility i hope it was uh, interesting gives you some understanding uh, what's today's shared mobility like and yeah thank you and i would like to give back to Magdalena so we could start with the pitching.
Yes, thank you very much, Nikolai, for this feedback. I think it's very good introduction to the topic, and for sure we can see that it's hot topic, which will have a lot of potential for growth. Before we go to the um, uh, pitching and the companies, which is the, the, also the core of this uh, dynamic changes in the industry, I would like to just um, thank all our partners who are involved in making this webinar today possible. We are very proud that we managed to build really strong partnership with very diverse partners. Uh, so I would like to thank you, of course, Okai, who is um, facilitator and a uh, foreign sprecher here at uh, Zygmunt. He will be later taking part in the panel discussion, um, who will take care about the, the forum and help in developing the whole concept. I would like to also thank you very much for the, to the city of uh, Wroclaw. Uh, today we'll have also direct, or Deputy Director of uh, Smart City um, Department of the city of Wroclaw and ARAF, which is the ag uh, agglomeration um, agency for um, uh, um, agglomeration, Wroclaw agglomeration development. Uh, we are also very lucky and, and very uh, grateful to uh, Urban Mobility um, European Commission Initiative, who uh, took care and also helped to promote this event. Uh, this is a, a European initiative to support urban mobility uh, uh, among all the European countries. And they are quite active and supporting startups and initiatives uh, to fund their ideas. But now, as mentioned, the, the, the biggest innovation happens in companies and startups. So I think we shouldn't wait uh, longer for the best practices uh, from both countries. And we'll give a floor now for, for pitching for short presentation to companies. Uh, I would like to now invite Lukasz Banach um, from Hop City. It's a company with the headquarters in Warsaw, but very actively uh, expanding right now. I think you're already present in Berlin. Welcome here. And I think we can hear more from you about your plans, trends, and challenges you are facing. Lukasz, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mugluna. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, so let me uh, start with a presentation, which shows you, I think, the different angle of the, of the sharing mobility. Uh, so I will start to share my screen. Uh, we can see it. If you see it. Okay. Yeah, that's all fine. Um, yeah, so um, I'm Lukas Bana, CEO of the Hub City, uh, previously named uh, Sieden Schlatt, which is not too uh, easy to say for people uh, uh, not being Polish native. So that's why we, we changed the name uh, like a few years ago to Hub City, which is more uh, uh, easier to, to say. Um, so uh, that's the simple presentation. I, I, I try to focus more on the uh, on the what I said, the different angle of the business and different approach to shared mobility. Um, quick brief of the history is how it started. Uh, 2016, we started as a typical sharing mobility operator in Poland with just mopeds. It was a core. It was a start, and we started from scratch, building everything from from uh, even the, the, the batteries and the system and the hardware because there was no great uh, you know, uh, systems in the, in the infrastructure available on the market. But how it continues, uh, like the, the, this year, uh, we are mostly e mopeds and e bikes fleet operator uh, for food and grocery delivery businesses across uh, eight European countries, including German market, including Berlin, as Magdalena said. Um, the question is, what is sharing mobility? What is sharing? Uh, I think most of the people say is just getting the, the bike or the car or the scooter uh, and travel to work or uh, to the cinema. From my perspective, uh, it's, it's technically the ultra short term rental enabled by modern technologies when the software part uh, and the technologies are key part to success and to simplify how people are behaving with. But what, what people, what most of the people are not see is the B2B market, for us is a food and grocery market, when we are, when the small packages like the pizza should be delivered quickly to the end user. And and that's exactly also a place when the sharing is uh, enabled and visible. We call it just B2B sharing and B2B mobility 
and that's the place when we are. Why? If we think about the people, we mostly think that people just need the bikes or cars to travel, to change their own private vehicles for the purposes. But also there is a huge market in Europe. It's, it's like the, around 4 million people, but one and a half a million people working in the food and grocery delivery industry. All of those people mostly need vehicles as a work tool, right? And based on our statistics, 90% of the market is working with and rely on, let's say, independent couriers or gig workers. So those are the people who are working for a platforms like from Glovo to Volt, Uber, Justy, Takeaway, and the others. And most of those people have no enough money to have uh, good electric vehicles. They don't want to be committed for a full day shifts. And also the companies, like a small number of the companies, like Scuba Division of Just Eat Group, uh, or the companies and the food companies like you know, Domino's, they have the, the own fleet. Most companies are not providing the fleet for the courier. So if you want to work with Glovo, you have to have your own bike or rent the bike for a few months. There is some exemption like the uh, uh, rapid grocery companies popping up in the market like Getty or like Gorillas, like Joker. But most of the companies are not providing the vehicles for, for, for those people because of the operational effort, because lack of the control of the vehicles, because lack of the commitment. People uh, have to be, and the companies wants to be flexible. And all the issues, if you have no own charging infrastructure, if you have no own hubs, if you have no own operation people to deal with, there is not a place and not a solution to provide the vehicles for those careers. And that's when the Hub City provides some kind of the unique receipt as the, the combination of the fleet uh, of the software and the hardware and the charging infrastructure. What it means, of course, we provided, provide the vehicles ready to go, um, branded uh, with full maintenance and the software. Uh, what it means software? It means we can enable the short-term rental for anyone who wants to work for a food and grocery delivery industry. So we have the own software because we grow from the typical and uh, sharing market for B2C customers. So we have the software for remote management, for remote dispatch and keyless access to the vehicles. Of course, it's combined with the hardware part from the obvious like the IoT uh, to some small enhancements like head and hand grips. Means we have something we can give to the customers uh, in, the, uh, in the sharing model. And of course we have, and we build the charging infrastructure, which is super crucial. Because if you think about uh, B2C market and the sharing infrastructure, different companies, are dealing uh, with a different approach. Some of the companies are just driving where the batteries around the city and changing them. Some of, some of the companies are getting the bikes or the scooters to the warehouses to recharge them and dispatch on the cities, uh, on, on the streets in cities next morning. And so the different approaches for a delivery industry, uh, most, of the, uh, most of the vehicles and the couriers are driving you know, even 100 kilometers or more for full day shifts. So there is not a case to wait a few hours to recharge the batteries. They have to have a chance to have enough uh, range on the batteries or uh, instant way of recharging the batteries here and now. And it's of course the part of the, of the pack we, we are uh, providing. And to the point, to the use cases, to give you the, the more overview how it works, uh, um, uh, I split it into three, three different cases uh, with Domino's, uh, Jesse Takeaway Group, and the Vault. For example, uh, with Domino's, is the typical case. Uh, they have the own restaurant, they have the franchise restaurants. So we are providing the vehicles for them. We are providing the, the system to follow the drivers, 
to see the stats, to manage the drivers, to have no, um, no more problems with the physical keys, to see any alerts, any accidents. And we also provide uh, the relocation package. So if they want to answer on the peak hours, uh, they have uh, uh, more orders in some restaurants. So we are able to provide more vehicles instantly in, the, in that location. But that's the easiest case because they still have managed and keep the fleet under their own roof in each restaurant one by one. Um, the second point, the second case uh, uh, we are dealing with is Jared, just to take away group. We, we have the case Poland, the UK and Romania and the Portugal also starting with the case for them uh, on the German market is that they have the couriers, they have their own operation but in some cities, they do not want to have their own hubs. So what we are doing is that we are providing uh, some kind of the hotspot for them. Let's say hotspot, it's quite similar to the stationary sharing, uh, like some cities are dealing with the bikes. So there are designated hotspots, the vehicles are parked there, the people, I mean the couriers can see the vehicles um, uh, in the app, they see the availability of the vehicles, they can reserve, they can manage that. They can go there, pick up the vehicle, drive around the city and live in the same place. The, our mm, effort is of course to um, keep the vehicles alive, uh, do all the necessary maintenance, but also to uh, provide the fresh batteries uh, once they need it, mostly next morning. Uh, and the uh, last but not least case is something as answering the rest of the market. So the world has the example. So we have uh, the, a lot of people who want to work for Volt or sometimes for Volt and Glovo and Ball at the same time, but with no own vehicles. So we mostly semi automatize the process approaching each individual couriers. So we are able to have the process to sign up for the vehicle, to contact with the a courier to provide the vehicle with all uh, necessary maintenance package and all the tools uh, to, uh, to provide uh, the, the keyless access to the vehicles, to uh, 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 keep the vehicles, park the vehicles in any neighborhood within the city, but also to give the overview for the operation people of the platform like Vault to, um, for example, to know what's the hours when the people are working for them, what's the, the package we can offer for them, what's the discount we can offer for them. So three different approaches. What we see is that no matter who is the, the, the real, the end user of the sharing, uh, the sharing is addressing the same pain points. People, do not need or sometimes do not want to have their own vehicles, but they have a, a, the special needs to address. And the, it's, it's nothing a big difference between going to work, to the cinema, or just, just working with the bike to uh, you know, deliver the food to the customers. The sharing and the software and all the combination is making it happen uh, with more safe way, uh, more um, uh, giving the business more efficient and to simplify the whole process. Thanks for, uh, for that. Happy to, um, to, to, to hear your comments or answer your, uh, your questions. Thank you, Lukasz. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, I don't see any question for now in the chat. Uh, but we will have, of course, this networking session later after the panel discussion. Maybe somebody wants to ask a question. It's the right time. You can also write in in chat or maybe unmute yourself and ask question. If not, I will invite you also to the breakout rooms uh, where Lukasz will be there to, to answer all possible questions. Yes. Thank you, Lukasz, very much. Thank you very much. Let's move now to, to Berlin. Uh, Finn Runka uh, from City Heicher. 
uh, it's an interesting idea about uh, application for uh, sharing uh, short distances in the city. Uh, Finn, I think you are starting for now in Berlin, but I think you also think potentially about Polish cities like Poznan and Wrocław. So please tell us about your plans, about the um, application and the whole idea behind. behind. Yes, okay. thank, you very, thank you very much, Magda, exactly. Um, and thank you very much to the whole SIDD team for making this possible here and for um, allowing me to present our project here. Um, my name is Finn Runkel. I'm founder and CEO of City Hatcher. So we will be looking at a slightly different concept of shared mobility today, um, which is really something that is not very, uh, not, not very much used so far. Um, just to start off with a few facts here, all the cars together only in Germany drive a total distance of 1.5 billion kilometers every day. And this is equivalent to driving to the sun five times every day. So that's the, that's the madness that we are producing here. And um, at the same time, there are only 1.5 people sitting in every car. Now, of course, we all know what this leads to. We have terrible frustration on the steering wheel, lots of traffic jams, gigantic CO2 emissions. The individual mobility sector only in Germany uh, is responsible for emission of 100 million tons per year. Uh, we have bad air quality in the cities leading to diesel bans. And at the same time, we have millions of people squeezing themselves into overcrowded buses and trains. And we think there's, uh, there's a mismatch here, there's something wrong. Um, because there are a lot of people traveling the same route at the same time. Like it can be commuters going from the suburbs to the city center, it can be people going to the concert or to a bar in the evening, um, people traveling out to the airport. And we want to connect these people, we want to bring them together. So this is more or less what the streets and the cities look like nowadays, right? Now let's just imagine what could happen if we managed to put two, car two people into every car. This already looks a little bit nicer and more relaxed, right? And let's just go a step further and just imagine that uh, four people would always share a car. So looking at this, you could even come up with a totally crazy idea of blocking one road for cars and opening it only for bicycles. And now, and don't worry, this is enough uh, dreaming and going crazy for today, but now let's just imagine what would happen if, thanks to these nice new wide and safe and comfortable bike lanes, half of the people would switch from their cars to, uh, to bicycles or e-bikes. Then this is an image that we could have in the city. And this is what we would like to see, not this. So how can we get there? We have developed an app that allows people to travel together. Um, it's as easy to use as, uh, as Google Maps or as an Uber. You really just enter your start and your destination. Um, you say how many seats you have available as a driver or if you're a passenger, how many seats you need. Um, you define your departure time and the rest is done for you by the app. So the app will go through all the, all the, um, uh, all the rides offered or requested in the whole system and the whole city. And it will find the best match for you. It will present your, your potential driver or passenger. You can see the reviews, you can see the photo, and you can decide whether you want to travel with that person or not. And once you confirm, um, the app will, take, will do the rest for you. It will guide you to the, to the meeting point, and it will navigate the driver to the, to the um, drop-off point and to the final destination with Google Maps. And the idea here is that the passenger has to find his way to the driver so that the, the effort for the driver is really minimal. He really only has to um, stop twice on the way to pick somebody up and drop them off. Now, still, you can ask why would a car driver offer the seats to, to random, like to strangers on the street? Um, so, of course, there's the financial aspect. Uh, many people don't even know how much they're spending on their car every year. In Germany, it's an average of 5,000 euros per year. Um, and this could be easily cut by half if you pick up passengers with you. Now, of course, you can actively reduce traffic and protect the environment. Um, people waste or lose about 150 hours per year in traffic jams. That's in big cities in Germany, like in Berlin. And then last but not least, of course, you have the social aspect. So you can meet new like-minded people and you don't have to drive around all by yourself anymore. Um, as a passenger, if you usually use public transport, you can travel a lot faster with City Hitcher because you don't need connections anymore. You can go straight to where you want to go. And um, you have higher comfort, you have a guaranteed seat. Um, it's nice and warm in winter time. So really lots of advantages. And for those who are normally driving themselves, empty seat to leave their car at home. 
Um, first of all, you can skip the complete uh, search for parking spot, which can take up um, up to up to more than uh, 40 hours per year, just looking for a parking spot. Um, of course, you do make a great contribution again to the protection of the environment, and you can save a lot of money. Um, so what's our business model? Um, in Germany, private people are not allowed to earn money by taking, taking people with them. That's why Uber had a lot of trouble when they first came to Germany. They wanted to uh, start with their normal concept where just people drive around with their cars and offer like a taxi service. This is not possible in Germany. Um, you, the drivers can only share their cost. So that's why the price for the passenger is very low. Um, the passenger pays 25 cents per kilometer and the driver gets out of that 20 cents or if he has two passengers, you can get a maximum of 30 cents. And um, our share is five cents if there's one passenger or 20 cents if there's two passengers. And with that, the ride is a lot cheaper than um, with other mobility solutions. We are cheaper than public transport. Um, the car sharing is about four times more expensive. Um, ride pooling, which is like a shared taxi where we, in Berlin we have uh, Bailkönig, um, that's also about four times more expensive. And an Uber or a taxi, uh, maybe up to eight or 10 times more expensive. Because as I said, like the Uber driver, he does this as a job, he drives for you, he drives you where you wanna go. In our case, the driver is driving anyway, he just picks you up, so he has no extra effort and he, he's not doing this to earn money. Um, the market is gigantic. So if only 1% of the car trips in Berlin were shared, this would already result in an annual revenue of 4 million euros. So um, as you said, Magda, we are not yet on the market. We are planning our first rollout here in Berlin in, uh, in April 22. And um, shortly after, we also want to start first test in, in Wrocław um, because we think that the Polish market is extremely interesting. So first of all, the overall income level is lower than in Germany. So this means that the financial incentive for drivers is higher. Um, and then also the public transport service is not always as well developed as in cities like Berlin, for example. So for potential um, passengers, the, the advantage can be much bigger than, than in Berlin, for example. So we're very excited about that test and I'm really curious and looking forward to seeing how that goes. Um, we then want to roll out and like, cover the whole cities of Berlin and Wrocław towards the end of the year. And then obviously raise some money once these uh, proof of concepts are uh, successful so that then uh, next year we want to onboard new additional cities. So um, together with me on the team, there's Julia doing the marketing and Mirko, who I think is here in the audience as well. Hi Mirko, um, our CTO. So together we are working on this very exciting project and we are looking for um, cooperations with cities and municipalities who actually want to provide better mobility services to their, um, to their people. Um, we're looking for a cooperation with other mobility providers so we can join our forces, join our services, provide better services, better mobility services to potential users. And we're also looking for a cooperation with companies. So um, our solution is B2C. We directly go to the customer and the customers can sign up with us. Um, but we also cooperate with large companies that uh, have an interest in offering a better mobility service to their staff so they can promote our solution among their staff. They can offer advantages like better parking spots, for example, for people who use carpooling. Um, so that's, that's um, one of the ways that we are going to, to acquire customers. And of course, like every startup, we're always looking for money. Um, yeah, so with that, I can conclude. And thank you very much. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, thank you very much, Finn. Yeah, it's really a lot of incentives to use such a solution. And you just have a question why nobody use it yet so far, <laughs> if it's so many good uh, benefits out of it. Um, if I understand, uh, the application will have different language uh, possibilities, yes? Yes, exactly. So for now, it will be German, English, and Polish. Great. Uh, do you have any more questions to Finn or I think there will be also a lot of opportunities to meet and uh, network in a breakout session. And I'm also sure you will have a lot of in comments to talk with. Oh, oh yeah, there's one question. What is the business concept in comparison to Uber? Right, so with Uber, um, the driver, it's his job, right? He drives around to make money from it. Um, he drives extra for you. Um, he picks you up, he drops you off. 
and you pay something like for a 10 kilometer trip in Berlin, you would pay like 20 euros. Um, in our case, the difference is that the driver is driving anyway. He's going to work, for example, or he's driving to the bar in the evening. Well, hopefully not, uh, not drinking, but let's say uh, going to a concert or whatever. And uh, he has three, three empty seats in his car. So he can, you can just join him. And that's why the price is very, very low. And our business model is we just take a commission of that 20% of what the, what the passenger pays. And yeah, that's, that's where we are making money from. Yeah, thank you very much. And if you have more questions to Finn, he will be after the uh, panel discussion in the breakout room. So please uh, reach him and uh, I'm sure it will be interesting to talk with him. Now I'd like to invite Bromi, uh, Paweł Gura. Um, I wrote at your uh, website that Bromi's technologies move public transport to the 21st century, making it accessible, cost efficient, ecological and personalized. Sounds really exciting. And Pavel, if you can tell us what's the secret behind and how you want to achieve it. Pavel, I don't hear you. I can see your presentation. Okay, can you hear me now? Oh, now it's all fine, yeah. Okay, perfect. All right. Uh, so first of all, uh, welcome and thank you for the invitation, opportunity to uh, give this talk. My name is Pavel Gora, I'm Chief Scientific Officer at Brumi Technologies. So we are a Polish startup uh, developing a platform for um, shared mobility. The platform is called Brumi. Uh, and uh, the problem that we want to solve uh, using this platform is inefficient public transportation and uh, transport exclusion. Uh, so in order to solve it, we develop a mobility platform for on-demand shared transport, mostly for van pooling and ba bus pooling services. Uh, so um, we develop a mobile application through which the users can uh, just order uh, request rides using vans or buses. Uh, we also have our own um, optimization algorithms that are tested and validated in a simulation environment, uh, which uh, models traffic in a given city. And finally, we have a management system for um, service management. Uh, and as you can see, we are IT company, so we don't possess our own fleet of buses or vans. Uh, we offer our services to, uh, to cities uh, or uh, companies, and we assume that um, we deliver uh, applications, we deliver IT solution, but at the current point, uh, we don't have our own fleet. So how does it work? Uh, so. Our system allows uh, users to just order a ride using the mobile application. Uh, then um, the user just have to do a short walk to the pickup point. So our optimization algorithm makes a decision uh, where exactly um, the user should be picked up and which van should collect, it, collect the user. Uh, then there's comfortable and fast shared ride. Uh, finally, there's also a short walk from the drop-off point uh, to the end of the trip. So in comparison to uh, the public transport with fixed uh, routes, uh, of course, there are shorter waiting times. Uh, the routes are flexible and they're automatically adjusted to uh, current needs, to current demand. Uh, there's higher transport network coverage uh, thanks to our real-time optimization algorithms. And uh, thanks to that, there are also lower costs. Uh, so there are minimal distances and there are no empty stops and empty trips uh, for buses. Um, so, thanks to that, we can potentially uh, optimize um, the public transportation uh, at nights, but also we can optimize uh, public transportation in suburban areas in which uh, usually the public transportation is uh, uh, not uh, as efficient as in the city centers. But uh, this solution can also help in transport employees uh, to the company or within a campus of a large company. And finally, it can be a good solution for older people or people with um, disabilities who cannot possess their cars and also would like to minimize um, the trip that they will have to, uh, to make in order to reach the public transportation. So we can say that it's a complement the solution to the current public transport with fixed timelines, with fixed, fixed line buses. Uh, there is an optimization of routes and optimization of the entire transport, thanks to, thanks to which we can also minimize the costs uh, of uh, public transportation. The ordering is easier 
uh, thanks to the mobile application and it's also relatively easy to manage the whole uh, fleet. Uh, similar deployments in other uh, cities worldwide show that um, thanks to uh, such solutions, um, the public transportation can be uh, optimized, so there might be uh, less kilometers, there might be lower uh, costs and lower uh, emissions. Uh, so, uh, in general, currently we assume that uh, uh, this service might be especially interesting for uh, local uh, authorities, for city authorities. So, our business model is that it will be a software as a service in which the customer uh, are uh, the customer is just a representative uh, of uh, urban um, urban mobility services of road authorities, but uh, we can also optimize uh, transportation um, of employees uh, uh, for a given company. Uh, currently, we have several hot leads uh, in Poland, and we also have one real world implementation in Jawoszyce. It's a city in Poland, but we also have some early talks. Uh, with uh, some other cities in, in Poland and in Scandinavia. Uh, we also um, collaborate with several partners, so we've participated in incubation problems, uh, for example, um, incubation program organized by, by Samsung, but um, we are also qualified to the accelerator a startup uh, that's called Smartup Accelerator, and we're selected as one of 10 uh, startups to European Go Global matchmaking program organized by EIT Urban Mobility. Uh, our team is uh, composed of uh, passionate uh, founders with global experience and expertise. So I personally um, has engineering experience gains during the internships at, at Microsoft in the US, uh, Google, IBM Research, and currently I'm also a researcher at the University of Warsaw. Uh, but we also have, um, of course, business uh, officers with expertise and MBAs at Stanford University, for example. Uh, and uh, also quite strong uh, engineering team. Uh, so if you are interested in collaboration and um, if your city would like to consider implementation deployment of our um, Brumi platform, feel free to uh, contact us and uh, we'll be happy to discuss how we can collaborate. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Paweł, for your presentation. And yeah, it's, your presentation exactly triggered this very important point that innovation in mobility is not possible without collaboration of different actors, business, public administration, and some other organizations. So we are really happy that today we have representatives for very different angles. Uh, and I hope in the breakout rooms it will be possibility to uh, exchange your contacts and think about the collaboration for a future. Uh, do you have any more questions? Um, I don't see any more questions for now in chat uh, to Paweł. There will be for sure again a uh, possibility to ask him direct question in a breakout room. And uh, as you already mentioned, I mean, mobility uh, on the other side generates also a lot of data. And there's another aspect which we will we'll talk today during the panel discussion. And for now, I would like to invite um, Jonas uh, Latzke from uh, Interatec. This is a company which operates parallelly in Germany and Poland. Uh, we met with uh, representatives from Wroclaw office uh, during our last delegation to Poland in Wroclaw. And um, Jonas will tell us about uh, why uh, your clients, why municipalities or organizations would be interested in creating their own uh, mobility services. What would be the reasons behind? What are the benefits of such a solution? Jonas, the floor is for yours. Thanks, Magdalena. Hi, everyone. I will share my screen, of course. And you can find that. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, guess we, we see it. Yeah, yeah, all okay. fine. Okay, super. So as Magdalena uh, told us, I want to tell you how to create your own mobility service and why you should do that. Uh, first of all, of course, I tell you something about Teratech and myself. So who are we? Um, we develop individual software systems and digital products. And we do that since 1996, so more than 25 years now. Um, what we do is we really like to uh, develop stuff nobody has done before. So it is written here as we want to turn challenges into pioneering successes. 
and that is uh, yeah something that uh, gives us great joy. So we really important we do that together with our customers. So uh, we are always working very close to all of our customers, and uh, yeah, don't, don't do something on our own, but with our customers. Yeah, who am I? Jonas Lake, I'm called. Uh, I work as a senior lead software engineer for Iteratech for over 10 years now. And I uh, mainly work in uh, agile development projects with very different technologies, very different customers, and uh, yeah, always with great challenges. Um, I picked some example projects for you from the sector of public mobility. Um, as you can see here, we have uh, several customers like Deutsche Bahn. We uh, developed on Comfort Check-in. You probably know that. Um, I want to point out one of these three examples. This is this one, BMW Drive Now. So because that was my very first project at Iteratech 10 years ago. So Iteratech developed um, the smartphone app, which is running in the car. So which is connected to the car, which connects to uh, mobile, um, yeah, mobile servers and all that stuff. And that was, uh, yeah, a very great pioneering effort and uh, yeah, a lot of fun, a lot of uh, challenges, but uh, as you might know, uh, DriveNow is now running uh, quite successfully. Perhaps uh, most of you know that car sharing system. Um, but that is not the project I want to talk about today. I want to tell you a little story. Oh, we had a customer that is called uh, AZV Südholstein. That stands for Abwasser Zweckverband. So that is a public sewage association. Doesn't sound like a shared mobility, but uh, I tell you it is. Uh, they participate in a federal initiative. This is called Mobil Gewinnt. It's translated to mobile winds. And that is an initiative for sustainable mobility management. So what they want to do is they want to offer their employees and in future also the public bike sharing as part of this sustainable mobility solution. And what they did is they chose a platform from a provider which might fulfill their needs, but this provider got bankrupt. So at the end of the day, they, they had nothing. And what they did is they talked to us and asked us if we could help. And then we came up with our solution. So why you don't create your own mobility service? So uh, they now, together with us, provide their own mobility platform based on open bike. That is an open source bike sharing solution. Um, I'll tell you some words about open bike. So Iteratech did not invent open bike. So this is an open source project by City of Ulm. And they wanted to provide a vehicle sharing system. So with a great focus on uh, bike sharing. And the main goal is to be connectable to many other mobility solutions. And they use quite a lot of open data APIs for that to make that as easy as possible. Um, they support several GPS trackers on the bikes, digital locks on the bikes. And what we did is um, we extended open bike with uh, functionalities the AZV Südholstein needed. So for example, um, a custom login for their employees, a re reservation functionality. And we all pushed that back to GitHub so that everyone can use that. So if you are interested, just see the getting started on GitHub and you are free to use Open Bike. So what are the advantages of our solution? First of all, you can see that here in Magenta, you can create your very own mobility service. So you can provide the service as you like and not as your platform providers like. Um, another important point, public money, public code. So the public finance the project, finance the software by tax money, and then it should be available to the public, I guess. Um, as you saw in my story, prevents a login effect. So if you are dependent on a specific provider, um, you, the provider has to fulfill your goals. Um, you are uh, dependent on if the provider develops and maintains the software and on the solvency. 
So as you can see, the story of AZV is at Holstein. Um, if the provider got bankrupt, then you have a problem. Um, you increase your creative freedom so you can develop the software as you like, tailored to your own needs. Collaborative development, so many functionalities of the software can be developed by many different companies, cities, authorities. That's what we did with Open Bikes. So we provided the functionality, reservation functionality, which can be used by any other city. Open source software is free of charge, so you have no license cost. You increase the digital sovereignty of yourself and your employees because you are much more involved in the development process. And then you have a much better understanding of your own mobility service than by just buying it. And in most cases, you can integrate better with other services to create a whole integrated solution, which yeah, feels like feels like one product. So far for me. So feel free to ask some questions or contact me in the future, of course. Yes, thank you very much. It was interesting how the aspect we can tackle from very different angles. And yeah, that's for sure also one of the solutions which I'm sure got it will be interesting for other participants, uh, maybe from City of Wroclaw to, to talk to you uh, in the breakout room. Uh, are there any questions uh, to you on us right now or you would prefer to keep it for a breakout session? I don't know, let me see. Oh, there's one. Um, example of uh, lock-in effect for share mobility company. Uh, um, I, yes, the example uh, was the story I, I told you. So um, our customer decided for a platform provider and uh, the platform provider got bankrupt because of uh, Corona, I guess it was. And uh, then they had nothing. So that is that is a real life example of the lock in effect that you are stuck to one provider and it, it happens. Thank you. I see there's also a comment about the link, uh, but I'm not sure if you can, uh, I'm sorry, who was it? Klaus, if you can write again, uh, maybe more in detail, what kind of link would you like? Then we try to support you. Thank you very much to all our startups and companies. As mentioned before, you will have a possibility to talk with the uh, all presenters in the breakout session. Uh, and now we would go, uh, I will give a floor to Nikolai, who will moderate for us the panel discussion. And I think yeah, we had a good starting point with all the presentation and interesting ideas. Nikolai, I give you a floor. Yeah, thank you. Uh, let me pin myself first. At the meantime, uh, guys, please use this opportunity to drop your LinkedIn accounts to the chat because we are here for connections after all. So please uh, drop your LinkedIn and connect to each other. Um, in the meantime, I would like to pin our uh, panelists. So give me a second. Okay, Robert is pinned and now hear it. Okay, perfect. So guys, I see you already turned your videos on. That's great. And okay, I see people write down their LinkedIn's. <clears throat> so today we are going to talk about different factors of cross-border adoptions of shared mobility services. And today with us, we have Yerit Sigmund, uh, Chief Operation Officer of Akai uh, in Berlin, in Germany. And uh, Akai is a leading manufacturer of micromobility. And from Warsaw, we have a municipal expert with us. That's Robert Bernatsky, Deputy Director of Smart City Department, City Hall Wrocław in Poland. And as a first thing, guys, I would like to give you a stage to introduce yourself and maybe tell a little bit about your expertise uh, in the field. And let's uh, start from Robert. So Robert, could you please uh, tell a little bit about Smart City Wroclaw and your own Z and yeah, introduce course. yourself? Yeah, 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 of course. Uh, thank you, uh, Nikolai. 
uh, for uh, introduction and uh, I'm very pleased that I'm uh, here uh, on this meeting and I would like to thank the uh, SBB team for uh, inviting me uh, for this meeting. Mm, uh, yeah, I am um, from uh, Wrocław and uh, I am responsible here uh, from the smart city uh, project. So uh, we, um, we we focus on the innovation and uh, we focus uh, to the um, one thing, to better quality of uh, our citizen life here in Wrocław. So if we mean uh, innovation, we mean uh, quality of life of the citizen. So uh, I think that is uh, this this, uh, this 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 word is uh, just uh, mm, equal our our job here in Wrocław. So uh, we are interesting if uh, in a, any field of the innovation uh, in the environment in the mm, in our in our infrastructure in our administration in uh, in digitalization economy in sharing uh, sharing mobility. So all these things is very mm -hmm. very important here in Wrocław uh, to us. So. I think that that uh, our uh, today meeting uh, would be very uh, fruitful because the digital economy and uh, of course the sharing economy is the hot topic. Uh, so so I hope that that uh, our meeting uh, fulfill this uh, this fruitful talks and of course to, I, I uh, give you the best wishes from Wrocław and invite you to the to the Wrocław. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Robert. And uh, Yerit, so could you also tell a little bit about yourself and industry expertise and Okai? Of course, yeah. Yeah, thank you everyone for uh, dialing in today <laughs> into this conversation. Um, as Nikolai already mentioned, um, I'm Yerit Sigmund, I'm COO of Okai, um, of Okai Global and Managing Director of the European um, Operations. Um, I'm in, in the automotive space since eight years and now two and a half years with Okai. Um, to give you like a, a very short, a very brief um, overview of Okai. Okai is at the moment the biggest manufacturer worldwide for shared micro mobility vehicles. Uh, most people know us as the manufacturer for Tier, for Lime, Bird, and, and all, almost all the other ones. Yeah, and we share this market um, together with Segway Nine Watt, and yeah, that is who we are. And since for months now, we also started um, um, an additional assembly line in Poland, in Wrocław, um, and that's where, where we also have a very close connection to the city of Wrocław. Okay. Yes, thank you very much. Um, let us start our panel then. And our first point for today would be the discussion of recent changes in uh, value chains. So if you'll we all know that mobility or like industry value chains, they include like supplier, manufacturers, uh, distributors, customers, and all these operations that go between all the stages. And we have interesting news and insights from our experts on these topics. And Yerit here, I would like to start from you and how you see the recent development in manufacturing as a really important part of uh, shared mobility value. Right. I mean, yeah, let's start with the, with the global supply chain, maybe, which yeah. was the main supply. reason for us to, to bring back some value creation to Europe. Um, I mean, everybody knows about the exorbitant price increases for overseas containers, um, uh, mostly affected by, uh, by, the COVID, by the COVID crisis globally. Um, this brought us to a point where we uh, it was it was yeah most clearly for us that we have to bring a part of the value creation back to Europe. Um, of course, uh, mostly part production is still in our in our main factory in Hangzhou, um, but the almost fifty percent of the value creation for our bikes at the moment is now in Europe, and that's in the city of Rotterdam, where we have a, a strong established bike manufacturing partner over there. Um, and maybe to see why did we exactly choose uh, Poland and Wrocław. Um, of course, it's the prox uh, proximity to Berlin where our European headquarters are. So we can be like within four hours, it's easily to get by train or by car to Wrocław. Also very important is that Poland offers an excellent industrial infrastructure. Yeah, with a long history um, production, a lot of experts in the field. Um, it is the factor that the logistics hub for almost whole Europe. 
and with the with the, with a very modern um, container port in Gdansk, um, is, which is more and more becoming a favorable alternative to Rotterdam. Wow! So it was really like, could you say it was selection between Rotterdam and Wroclaw over here, or? No, no so Rotterdam is only a, it's only a port, and uh, Poland is like is the, is the company for production, so it's not only this. Of, of course, Rotterdam is much bigger, something else, but we can see that the, that the, that the Rotterdam port is uh, is developing and is especially for production in Poland. If you want to get the parts to Poland, it is a favorable um, alternative, France, of course. Yeah. Uh, Robert, from your side, as for supplier. A supply scene in Rostov. So we see now that bikes uh, could be manufactured there, but what about other means of transport? What about the manufacturing in Rostov? What could you tell? Yeah, I, I can uh, I, uh, I can tell you that the uh, Wroclaw is uh, is is a really great city. You know, we got a strong uh, economy, and uh, because of that, uh, we got um, lots of uh, people uh, uh, to work with the IT. And uh, I can say also that uh, we got uh, at about uh, one hundred thousand uh, students uh, here in Wroclaw uh, that can. Uh, cooperate and work uh, here in Wrocław and uh, we are also the uh, most uh, innovative uh, uh, city um, here in Poland and the um, second one when we think about the creativity so lots of startup hits here in Wrocław uh, working so it's a best uh, best destination to make a business and when we when we think about the um, the, the the problem with uh, distribution and from the um, from this uh, this problem uh, with, that made the pandemic uh, for us. Uh, we see it, uh, for example, on the uh, bicycle, bicycle um, rentals uh, because there is a there is a problem with uh, with bicycles and the part for the bicycles. So, for example, we uh, preparing uh, 2022 uh, the tender and we open this tender uh, that. Uh, the tenders can use uh, the used bikes or the used part. Uh, it it should be it should be it, it, it should be with uh, the good quality and it should be checked. But uh, for example, this is the new uh, new for us. Uh, but this kind of the digital uh, economy uh, just give us uh, this special special aim and special um, special uh, direction. Uh, to the Wrocław, so uh, because of uh, that, the supply chain we, we we just can can just skip, uh, and uh, we can use uh, our forces that are in the Wrocław, for example, uh, to you know to um, to fulfill this 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 gap. But sometimes when we mean the parts, when we mean uh, the some chip, uh, this is a problem, and this is a global uh, problem also for for us. So. So it uh, it's, uh, depends on the city and it depends on the um, economy of the city. This is my point of view. And from uh, its question to both of you guys, uh, would you propose any um, solution or approach uh, to find a solution for this problem? Yeah, I can I can say that that uh, we um, we prepare a special program for for for. Uh, startups for um, for the huge corporation. Uh, it's called uh, City Lab of Wrocław. This is the special program that the um, the people, startups, uh, the corporation, uh, academics, uh, backgrounds can test the innovation in, in the field of Wrocław. So uh, every part of the Wrocław uh, invite them to to test this innovation. Uh, so. If you got the, the, some innovation and want to test it uh, in Wrocław, this is the place to, to do it. Okay. Um, uh, actually, Yeri, do you think it would be also interesting for Kai to be um, a part of this, maybe as part of R&D or piloting in Wrocław for new shared mobility companies? Definitely, of course, yeah. So we are, <clears throat> that's what we plan at the moment. So far, we always had our full R&D completely in China and now we want to take part of this closer to the customer and um, yeah and then of course it makes sense to have it closed uh, to the uh, to the factory where we then produce the bikes yeah okay so if I guess from supply we could now move more to the operational side of things um, so daily use of 
bikes and cars um, and that's kind of a small reflection on the transportation on demand topic as a, some sort of a trend um, so one of the speakers raised the topic of uh, so-called ultra ultra short rental um, of uh, shared mobility and yeah could you reflect on that like do you think it's perspective at the moment from your point of things and yeah would you how would you see the development of this type of shared mobility me all yeah it's, uh, it's open question at the moment it's open question okay okay please start yeah thanks yeah thanks so uh, I think that, that, that this, this is a good uh, good uh, example because so when we think about the shared mobility, the uh, most important factor is uh, if there would be a scooter, car or any other uh, part of the transport uh, in the right place. So uh, so if I can uh, for the um, little short uh, short period of time, uh, if I can uh, rent uh, some car, for example, one day, two day, um, it would be uh, great because sometimes I, I need a huge car. Sometimes I need an electric uh, little car to, to drive from the road. So some, sometimes I need a bicycle. So uh, if uh, I can the chance uh, that I can drive the car uh, from the Monday to, to Friday uh, by the little car, car scooter or the bicycle or the tram, uh, Wroclaw tram. And in the weekend when I, uh, when I live uh, from the Wroclaw, for example, uh, with my children, wife, I need a huge car to, to, to pack everything. So, so I need uh, to rent for example, for two days, the, the car. And uh, it would be a, this gap that uh, will short us uh, to uh, to have their own car because people in Poland got the car, the two free cars in the family because they needed uh, to, to travel and, uh, and, uh, and sometimes this car they use, for example, half an hour and this car is standing in the, in the market uh, uh, place and and uh, there is no place here in Wroclaw to park the car. It's very it's very um, it's very um, it's 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 a problem here in Wroclaw to to find a place and also in the Berlin and I think the all other uh, all, all, all other places. So so this kind of the transport as um, as you mentioned the bicycles, uh, car rent uh, and others. Uh, can 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 bring some mm, some mm, good point to to change our behavior and to for example rent the car mm, sometimes i don't need the car I'm, but i don't have a chance to you know to to drive with my family uh, far away because i don't have for example abonnement or uh, i don't know if yeah. it's this car would be uh, in the right place so so it's a it's a quite 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 uh, good example mm -hmm. yeah thank you robert for a good point uh yet it would like to add anything to that well, maybe to look at it from the micro mobility perspective then we see an ever increasing range of vehicle types uh, that are more and more taking over the tasks of conventional cars and vans um, and at the same time the boundaries between car bike and scooter sharing um, are blurring yeah mm -hmm. um in particular a particular focus in the moment is clearly on micro mobility, where vehicles that fulfill a good, a good transport purpose. Yeah? And as, as um, Lukas already pointed out at the beginning of the event, the sharing market is rapidly, rapidly developing from a pure B2C market where it came from to a gigantic B2B market. Okay. So yeah, right. it's mostly like um, all, these, all these delivery companies for grocery delivering, food delivery. All of these comp companies are tend to use to like to cover their last mile transportation more and more um, with shared electric micro mobility vehicles. And then it's it's not only the classic bike; it's like it's a cargo bike. It's like maybe even a cargo bike with with a with a, with a closed cabin or something like this. Yeah, that's where we uh, see a very very uh, um, strong growing market here. Yeah, thank you, right. And I see that uh, you already started to talk about the blurring between segments of different transport and also the stretch of the means of shared mobility. And uh, I guess, Robert, here is a good uh, time to 
ask you uh, how does Rotslav uh, work on new means of shared mobility, exactly about private public transportation innovations that um, you told me before. Yeah, the, the public transport is the most uh, efficient when we think about the cost uh, and uh, and uh, the lots of participants that can use it. So, uh, so this is the uh, most efficient way of uh, transport in every city. And we've got a problem and every city got a problem with the first and the last mile. Uh, so it's a, it's a problem and uh, the, all the uh, sharing uh, things, I mean, uh, scooter, bikes, uh, car uh, sharing, uh, and other things can can fulfill this this uh, this gap. So so it's very uh, important also for us to uh, operate in in uh, such a field. So uh, as a city, we uh, we as a second city in in Poland. Uh, prepare the tender uh, for the bicycle uh, rent, uh, and uh, we got uh, at about uh, year to year uh, two million uh, two million rentals uh, here in Wrocław. Uh, uh, such a bikes. Uh, we also be the first city in the uh, in the Poland that started operate with the uh, with the scooter. It was a line company, uh, and uh, after that we got um, uh, five company here in Wrocław uh, operate in our market. Market, uh, with the scooters, uh, and it was uh, at about uh, four thousand uh, scooters in the in the Wrocław. Uh, and we mean uh, when we think about the Wrocław, we mean uh, at about a million people here uh, living uh, in the Wrocław and in the uh, suburb area um, here in Wrocław. But they uh, they they use the city, and it's about a million people. So for for uh, four thousand uh, uh, scooter uh, here in Wrocław. Um, also, there was uh, uh, motorbikes at about uh, four hundred uh, that people uh, use it. But but they uh, they prefer they prefer um, the bicycles and the scooters uh, mm -hmm. for examples. Also, we see that there is a, there is the old people uh, for example that using the using the scooters it's very uh, it's very interesting uh, because the, the Wrocław uh, uh, society is is uh, very young when we think uh, about the innovation so uh, so we can see the old people that uh, driving uh, for the city by the by the scooter uh, so so you can imagine that this is the this is the something uh, something something uh, uh, inspiring for for young people uh, also and for others that uh, that they can use uh, such a form of transport um, for example and uh, and also we got uh, and also we got in the market the car sharing company um, uh, there was the free private uh, company uh, in Wrocław with about uh, 500 uh, cars here uh, in Wrocław. And also we, we were the first city uh, in Poland that uh, prepared the tender uh, for the uh, public uh, rental uh, electric vehicle. Uh, so uh, we got the 200 cars, uh, uh, public cars here in Wrocław. And uh, uh, we prepare a special place for this car. So if you go to the mm, for the market uh, uh, here in Wrocław to the old town, you can find a special place for, for such, a, mm, such a car. Uh, and also we prepare special lane, uh, bus and electric cars lane. So if you are driving uh, the car that is a petrol car, mm, you can see by your mirror uh, that in the lane uh, beside you, uh, uh, there is a car uh, that is driving this is electric car uh, for example and also lots of charger uh, for this uh, for mm -hmm. this vehicle so you can imagine that this this market here in Wrocław is uh, really it's really fruitful it's really fruitful hey robert thank you um you raised that also topics of uh, also like age inclusivity for um for different uh, means of transport and also one of our pitching companies uh, mentioned that um, yeah, so at this point, Yerit, would you like to reflect on what Robert said? Because there are several points for sure. Oh. I'll, I'll try to keep it short. Um, I think the most important to to have and to create a successful um, traffic in a city is the cooperation between both. So um, 
often often like startups, mobility startups, they are a bit arrogant when it comes to the existing uh, public transport. And this needs to end because they need to see that they will always be a part of the public transport. And also the public transport um, needs to accept that new mobility forms will be a part of the public transport in the future. Um, and even if it's from a sales perspective from OKI, often better you have an unregulated market. I'm a big fan of a regulated, mar a regulated market and of, of yeah, where everybody really knows what to do and where like, because the, the chaos that we've seen like over the last years and here's when you've really seen piles of dumb bikes and of, of crashed scooters all over the all over the sidewalks. This is something that will make, yeah, that will create a negative um, surrounding. If you have a, a city that has strict rules or a good, let's say a good framework that helps people to create an, a, a public transport that is a public transport of, of a municipality, transport and private private public transport um, this is i think the, the only way to create um on a long term um yeah a good um urban traffic so in other words uh if i buy one ticket and i use with this ticket both uh, a scooter and a tram uh, that's the way right uh, for the that's, development that's the that's the traffic utopia um it's yeah, that, that would be would, 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 would be the best way to do it. Um, but but also like they can also exist side by side. But there needs to be like a, a good framework that balances it out. Because um, yeah, that's what I think. It's quite I, interesting. I, I, I think that you have to uh, got uh, one application that uh, you can buy the ticket for the uh, all the uh, all the uh, public transport and. Uh, all the others, uh, private uh, transport, it would be a, a good uh, example. Not the one ticket, but the one application. Yeah, I think one one application is saying there's a lot of cities already who, who can do it in, in one, applic uh, one application, like uh, like the Yelby system in Berlin, or I think with Trafi, um, the tra Trafi software that is like the, um, the, the backend of many, uh, many uh, official apps from the cities, this, this can work. Um, I think that the boundaries are at the moment are is that like the private shared fleets they are mostly it's they are much more expensive um, than um, than like of, uh, like official public transport and I think that that's the gap to overcome to see how, how you can can balance this within one ticket but of course one app is already a very good uh, very good step into that direction. Yeah, and there, uh, yeah, it got uh, the right that uh, there should be uh, some regulation uh, to. Uh, to this market it's very important it's very important um, actually this guys since you mentioned the private fleet uh, i have a short question what are your views on uh, corporate fleet sharing uh, today before it i know that there were a lot of articles that this industry is kind of um, on the like dying almost <laughs> but now i see also positive news so what do you think about corporate fleet sharing is it the future of shared mobility as well I don't think so. I think these, these corporate owned fleets, they will be subsidized by shared fleets and then mm -hmm. not, no longer belong to the belong to the corporates because it doesn't make even from an economical view point of view, it doesn't make any more sense for them. So okay. If you okay. if you're very big and you can you have can streamline the vehicles um, with within your employees, but it uh, I, I don't I don't really see it. But just just more my, my point of view yeah, Fair enough. It, 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 it's a right when you got the uh, economical if we, if, if we see uh, on this market in the economical uh, way uh, this, this the kind of transport is um, is the transport uh, that you have to make lots of money uh, to this market uh, so we can see it as a pandemic uh, times showing us that the, most of the players uh, on the market just uh, just washed from 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 our city we are waiting because uh, they promised that uh, in the spring uh, after the pandemic they will uh, came back to the uh, to the Wrocław. so 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 we can see that the, mm -hmm. this is uh, this uh, and this kind of the business got uh, no uh, no uh, no uh, economical uh, economical and the money mm, and the money uh, stable position mm, in the in the company and yeah it's it's uh, yeah we got it right thank you guys
um, yeah, from one point, our time is uh, almost up, but I think we still have time for one uh, question to discuss. Also, just feel free to write in the chat. Maybe you get one uh, question from the audience. Uh, let's just have a look at the chat. Maybe there's some short questions that pops up. One, two, three. Okay, then ask mine. Um, so we, um, you have a lot uh, of talk Sorry, today. The chat, it's it's blocked. That there's no way to ask the question really. Oh, okay, just let me. That's the reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Right, what about right it's now? It's good. It should be like that. <laughs> <laughs> now it works. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. I guess there were a lot of sound notifications, and that's why I turned it off for five minutes. <laughs> okay, but now it should be back. So, um, okay, is the Vienna ticket a model for shared mobility? Guys, what do you think? Um, also, maybe if you know what is the Vienna ticket. Um, I think that's, that's the same problem. You need to, you need to be able to, to bring the, the pricing structure of public transport and the pricing structure of private shared mobility um, um, yeah, together. If this works out, mm -hmm. then of course, the Vienna ticket is a, is a very nice and cool model. Okay, thank you. Um, and we see one more uh, question from Mateusz. And I guess it uh, comes together with our concepts of data protection and uh, potentially data sovereignty. <laughs> so data sharing, shared mobility, open API. Uh, please guys reflect your opinions on that. And how is it in Wroclaw? How about it uh, visit in Okai? Let us know. Yeah, data is very important in uh, every part of the business and in the um, in the uh, in the city. So we collect a lot of uh, data that are use, useful for the company, but um, we get the GRPD uh, that direction that uh, uh, not. Uh, any data uh, should be uh, should be on the market uh, should be um, should be open data. So uh, every kind of the data that is uh, important for some projects um, to make some innovation in the city lab program, we just uh, we just uh, share this uh, this data and trying to um, uh, trying to um, preparing some 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 programs some some innovation that can uh, you know. Uh, Prepare better quality of the light for the citizen. So, if this data is for the better quality of the life, the people we just uh, share this data. Uh, what about sharing data for profit, uh, is it something you could think of, or for public data? Yeah, we, that's we, a we, no, no. Yeah, we think about that, but as a municipality, we are not the business uh, corporation so it's uh, it's it's very it's very hard you know to prepare some models that we can uh, we can uh, we can uh, for example sell such a kind of the data so we think about that but this is a, a lot of regulation here in polish law that uh, that can should be fulfilled to to um, to sell some kind of the data uh, we got the we got the such a Mm, such a website that is uh, called Open Data Wrocław, and uh, we try to put this uh, this data up there so everyone can can see uh, part of this uh, uh, data up there. And also we got the SIP. This is the information uh, S3, mm, so you can also see lots of lots of data up there uh, about the architecture and other things uh, in Wrocław. So so this is the two. Uh, to main platform that that uh, you can, for example, see some data important to you. Okay, uh, Yerit, would you like to add something to that or some use thoughts? I'm a strong believer in data protection, yeah? and I'm convinced that data protection is a decisive advantage for Europe and European societies. And fundamentally, I think that data sovereignty must always lie with the user. But beyond that, however, it's very important for cities as for manufacturers and private owned companies alike to have access to anonymized data 
in order to further develop traffic management or products or, or vehicles um, to, in a, in a sense of a true traffic turnaround. Yeah? And we do have the technology which is needed to use data in a safe way without violating the right of personal data privacy. Um, we just have to do it, I think. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a great statement and that's something we could really use to um, close up our panel that data should stay with the user, right? That's a fair and good point for us in society. Um, so guys, I would like to um, close the conversation because the time is up and now you have an opportunity for some uh, uh, closing remarks and thank you for joining uh, the panel today. So Robert, uh, could you start with some finishing words from your side? Yeah, as I mentioned, we got the city lab uh, lots of here. Uh, here, so if any one of you want to test some innovation, got some some ideas uh, that could, uh, for example, uh, fulfill better innovation here in Wrocław. So we are welcome here. Uh, also, uh, also. Uh, I would like to invite you uh, 14, 15 uh, June uh, this year for the big Congress Smart City uh, Forum uh, here in Wrocław. And we will, uh, in that meeting, uh, talking about uh, all the things uh, uh, which are very close to the smart city, for example, uh, artificial intelligence for the open data, for the architecture, for the environment, uh, and other other things. So, so if you've got the time, uh, just just uh, invite us uh, here in Wrocław. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be a hybrid um, hybrid uh, congress, but uh, if you've got the time, uh, be here in Wrocław, 14, 15 in June. Okay, Robert, thank you. And for everyone else, please save the date. Uh, Yerit, please. Yeah, thanks for having us. And Robert, see you the latest in June. Yeah, <laughs> yeah great. <laughs> okay, guys, it was a pleasure to have you today. And I think we discussed a lot of important topics. So now we could switch to networking and discuss the things more in person. Um, and let me provide now some technical orientation for the upcoming networking session. It will last around 15 minutes in Zoom breakout rooms. You will have an opportunity to switch between rooms. If it doesn't work, please uh, message me in chat and I will try to guide and assist you. Um, rather than that, I invite you now to make your Zoom applications full screen, to unmute yourself, to turn on the video for the better user experience. And right now I'm starting sessions and you have one button in the middle of the screen that will literally tell you to join the Zoom session to a breakout session. So if this button doesn't appear and you move to the room automatically, that's great. But if this button appear, please click it to be in your network room. Um, so I have manually assigned you randomly to four different rooms. And yeah, from now, let the sessions begin. See you in networking parts. Okay, I see people gradually leaving the main stage. That's great. Of course, thank you very much again for the participation. Oh, sorry. Thank you very much again for, for joining us today. And we are happy that we managed to have so many stakeholders and already preparing this agenda. We saw there'll be so many different interaction between the participants and speakers. So we really hope that it was just a starting point and that more the discussion will follow. And we will be very happy to get to know maybe in a few months that some collaboration come up out of this webinar today. If you need any assistance from our side, feel free to contact us. And of course we will help and support as we can. Thank you very much for joining us today. Enjoy your lunch break now and, <laughs> and we're staying in touch.
Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much, Magda. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.